What I found interesting about the Rowan Club was that it's so vivid and lush. They have these rich pinks and teals and patterns everywhere. And on a purely sort of aesthetic, formal level, those are the kind of scenes that I'm looking for. It's scenes that actually feel like they would come out of a movie or a film. And in some ways, the Rowan Club epitomizes this kind of space. On the other hand, it's historically a space of exclusion and women were not allowed in for many years. These spaces were created by men for men, these kind of potent, dominant, powerful spaces. And I just couldn't resist the opportunity to take it and to reuse it in a different way. Originally, when I started doing these pieces, I chose images from B-grade movies. And I was thinking about how women are portrayed in film. The more I thought about it, the more I thought that I would like to take the photographs myself. I decided to approach someone to be the photographer of the works and to see how things played out when I played the role of the director. In this series, there are a couple of things that I'm looking at. The first being the female gaze, and if it's possible to look at ourselves and look at women in a different way, and the way that women have historically been filmed in movies. I've recently become interested in making work about what I think of as the mirror phase. And this is the phase where a woman looks at herself in the mirror, and the reflection she sees is not who she feels she is anymore. Your idea of self starts diverging. We live in a society that's always asking us to reject the idea of aging. That is something that we have to fear because when we become old, as women, we become invisible. So the series is looking at older women and asking us to really look at them and look at them still as women, as sort of sexual, desirable, sensuous beings. There's also the idea of the older figure and the younger figure. So there's a kind of looking forwards and looking backwards feeling in the series. The young girl represents this frozen state of who we are expected to be versus who we actually are. I'm also looking at this sort of shadow masculine figure, which in some ways links to the Rand Club, this kind of invisible patriarchy that we're always influenced by. I've always been interested in using unusual materials that are not generally associated with art. We adorn ourselves with these materials, with sequins and beads, in order to kind of make ourselves more, to make ourselves brighter and flashier. These are materials of aspiration. We're obsessed with the surface, how things need to appear rather than how things are. And we do this at the cost of everything underneath. Sequins have been historically used in costumes, in dresses, to make women grand and shinier and almost sort of iridescent so that you can't really quite hold your image of them. I wanted to work with sequins because they form an image that is both there but also not there. And when I started embarking on this project, I realized the extent of the palette and the different surfaces of these sequins. Some were iridescent, it's refractory. The way they reflect light means that they refuse to hold an image. The first stage of the process is to choose the woman and to find a space, because each series of the sequin pieces deals with a slightly different topic. The first one was looking at the way women were stereotyped in movie scenes as that they were almost in this moment of ecstasy. The second series was about asking women to actually act out the different archetypes of film. And I chose to work with women who I thought would be interesting when they were asked to act out these scenes. 
The second phase is to actually take the photographs. We have costume people, we have makeup. It's like a small film set. Then the next phase is choosing the photographs and then working out through grids which colours go where. The pieces can have up to 80 colours and these are all numbered and made into signs to work out which colours to put alongside each other. Then I have a team that I work with that stitch the sequins on one by one. The teams have actually been working with, with me for many years, so it's a continual process of learning and relearning and learning new things. The projects become more ambitious, the palette becomes more ambitious, the way we work becomes more ambitious as we continue. I'm constantly going back and reworking the surfaces. So sometimes I'll put a color down and then we'll come back and they'll all be taken away and redone. It's not like the first time I make them, it's perfect from the get-go. There's something very physical about the experience of looking at the sequin pieces. When you're actually in front of them, they're like a mirage that never holds the image in the same kind of way. So if you step one meter to the left or the right, it's a completely different picture. They're sort of like an unending game. What I love about that is that it becomes a metaphor for these kind of women that I'm looking at. This idea that we're meant to be one thing and yet it's almost impossible to kind of hold on to this ideal, you know, that we're fighting to achieve all the time.